You just got to learn to go with the heat, Rico. So that's a uh, quotation from a character named Sonny Crockett from an old TV show called Miami Vice. Uh, not the movie, but uh, a TV show from the 80s. It's something I used to watch. Uh, Don Johnson was Sonny Crockett. And uh, I forget the other characters, so I apologize. But anyways, uh, the reason why I bring that up is because this uh, black Ferrari came in the mail today. And in that TV show, they had they were driving around a uh, Ferrari kind of like this. But an interesting story, it wasn't a real Ferrari. It turns out that the uh, production studio built two replicas. They built them on Corvette C3 chassis, and they weren't real Ferraris. They were just replicas. And Ferrari was so angry that they sued them, and then later on gave them real Testarossas. So they blew up, uh, I think maybe they destroyed this car or something. I can't remember the, every episode. But anyways... So it was an interesting tidbit of information. So that spurred this whole video because I've had these three cars in my collection for quite a while. These two are Kyoshos and this is a TLV, so we'll compare the convertibles between later on. But let's first start talking about the coupes because uh, you know that would have probably come out first. So we're gonna set these aside. Okay. So the Ferrari Daytona 365 GTB slash 4, which would be this, a GT Berlinetta, this is, uh, was available between 1968 to 1973, and people think around 1,400 of them were made, a little over that. And uh, it's known as the Daytona, although that was never its official name. Uh, the Daytona name came from the media uh, because a bunch of Ferraris won the 1967 24 hours of Daytona race and they came in first second and third and so for some reason they just dubbed this car the Daytona and it stuck it seems so this car had a 4.4 liter 350 ish horsepower engine uh, up front of V12 and it could go like 170 plus miles per hour and 0 to 60 was in the 5 second range and uh, for better weight balance they put the transmission in the rear and that did seem to have paid off because it was a quite a uh, competitive race car. The styling itself was done by Pininfarina, and in particular, a Leonardo Fioravanti. Fioravanti was the designer of this car. And uh, this being like the 70s or so, or the late 60s, early 70s, the pontoon fenders are gone. You know, the voluptuous body is a little less voluptuous; it's more angular. And then, you know, in the mid to late 70s, everything was really straight-edged and stuff like that. So, evolution of uh, supercar styling, I guess. Um, interesting note that Wikipedia is telling me is uh, original cars, <coughs> excuse me, original cars had this, uh, you know, headlights behind this plexiglass. But uh, U.S. regulations uh, in 1971 said you couldn't have headlights behind uh, glass or plastic. If anyone knows the reason why, please leave a comment. I don't understand the logic behind that. Maybe they get too hot or something. But anyways, so that eventually led to all the Daytonas having uh, pop-up headlights because of U.S. regulations. So this this kind of vanished. So Kyosho seems to have done an early earlier model year for this uh, particular Ferrari here. Okay, so let's get into the casting of this one here. We're going to review all four. I'll try to go pretty quick here. Typical wheels are pretty nice, nicely molded, nice curvature to the tires here, pin and Farino logo there, good. Silver on the windows looks good, pretty nice molding here. That front end was pretty neat, right? You can kind of see, like it looks like it has four headlights behind this, this uh, piece of plastic, so that's really nice. Ferrari badge looks okay, it's a little ribbing here, printed on. Separate uh, chromed plastic bumpers look pretty good. Some black painted uh, ribs there for the grill. This thing has nice textured, <coughs> nice textured uh, rubbery tires, decent uh, base, and screwed together so you can modify it easily, do wheel swaps easily. Uh, hey, I remember, look, this thing rolls pretty nice, although usually Kyoshos have a 50-50 chance of rolling well. Okay, so the rear is typical Kyosho. We got some plastic taillights, looks pretty good. Plastic bumpers again, they got that detail right there, a little chrome piece I guess here. Maybe this is a fuel filler door? I don't know for sure. Uh, this got Ferrari printing there, looks good. 
is red, so it's going to have paint rash. I don't know exactly when this model came out, but it, it's at least 10 years old, I imagine. Hmm, seems to be a scratch in there as well. Molded in windshield wiper blades, painted silver, and then a uh, typical black interior. Nice molding detail, you just can't see much of it because it's black. So. so that's what's going on with this one. It's a great model. I think the stance looks pretty good. It, uh, it's great, you know. It's just uh, these older Kyoshos, they often, and particularly red ones, they always get paint rash it seems. So be mindful of that if you want to buy this. Okay, and then also red cars tend to fill in a lot of panel gaps. It's not super bad, but you can see it's thicker here, and then there's more panels showing here. So that's something to be mindful of. Let's take a look at some photos here. Okay, so... Yeah. I think Kyosha does a good job in most cases. You can decide for yourself if you think that's good. And the rear end even while we're at it. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it. Seems alright. Okay, so let's move on here. So the, the next one we're going to go into is the competition version. So I'll talk a little bit about this. There were some privateer racers, but uh, the official cars developed by are sold by Ferrari. They only made 15 of them. They only made five of them in uh, each three, three, each of three years. So 1970 they made five, 1972 they made five, and 1973 they made five. So very few of these competition cars were officially m manufactured by Ferrari. Uh, but it was a really successful car. Um, it, in 1973 at least, the engine was bumped all the way up to 450 horsepower. They lightened the load because um, uh, panels were replaced with aluminum fiberglass and the windows were all plexiglass being a race car. So, in 1971, some privateers, they came in fifth uh, overall at the 24 hour of Le Mans. So that's pretty impressive because they're probably going up against purpose-built race cars. Whereas this is like a production, more of a production road car. And then in, in 1972, it won Le Mans again but all the GT GT class wins. Sorry, I don't think it won outright. But in the GT class, it took the first five places. So one through five were all Ferrari Daytonas. So that's pretty impressive. And then it also it won the GT class uh, in 1973 and 1974. So this is all 24 hour, hours of Le Mans. And then 1979, five years after production ended, uh, one of these cars won its class or and also second overall at the 24 hours of Daytona So I mean that's an out-of-production car and it came in second overall So in a 24-hour race, so that's pretty impressive And then one other last bit of info I found in the cannonball run of 1971 um, Dan Gurney and I forget the other guy, but they raced across America from New York to LA in a little under 36 hours and they average over 80 miles per hour. So that's pretty fast. I've driven across America a few times, never in that short amount of time. I'm thinking more like 60 hours, 50, 60 hours it can be done. Not 35 if you want to keep your license. So eventually this was replaced by the Berlin at a Boxer, which is a mid-engine rear, and I think it was a poor choice. This is a much cooler looking car, I think. Okay, so that's all the stats I got on these things. Let's uh, look at this uh, model here. So obviously it's white, now the wheels are gold, and I think they're different. Yeah, the silver one has like the star knockoff, center knockoff, whereas this gold one, you don't see those little star stars on that center. So it's a different wheel. Still good curvature to the tires, and then you'll see the pipes here now are coming out the side. And uh, screwed together base again, and the uh, tires, you know, they're a different pattern. I think uh, most Kyoshas, they always have a different tread pattern. What's weird is this competition car has thinner tires than the road car. That makes no sense. I don't understand the logic behind that. That can't be accurate. Well, anyways, going to the front here. Now we have uh, the four plastic headlights behind these plas this plastic uh, aerodynamic cover so that looks pretty good the grill is a little bit different it's a much finer texture seems to be a plastic insert over here again I think that's a different plastic insert and what's weird on this one is the side blinkers are painted 
whereas that original one, they're actually plastic. <coughs> okay, so no bumpers being a competition car. And two holes there. I don't know. Maybe brake ducts? Not sure what those are. Okay, so the white paint again is filling in the gaps quite a bit. That's every brand's problem it seems. Interesting, the door handles here. It's weird, I'm looking at the photos of the real car and I don't even see any door handles. But I assume this is what this is, right? But the road car here, nothing here. But looking at the TLV, it seems like the door handle is right here, so I can't really see it in photographs of the car. Okay, well that's something new to learn today. Badge looks pretty well proportioned. Some vents here. Probably hood pin locks. The uh, central... Weird, weird wiper blade. It's one wiper blade, but it's resting in that position. Whereas the other one, it has, you know, two traditional wiper blades. So that's interesting. I'm just gonna leave that there. Uh, seems to be a contaminant there on the roof, which is too bad. I don't know what collection this came from either. Paint rash. Okay, some sort of recesses. Don't know why. Okay, silver trim around the windows. All of them. Black molded interior. Can't see much though. And then uh, on the back, plastic inserts. And it's got these third little light. And that is on the competition cars, I believe. And then uh, some, uh, I guess some sort of s straps or something to keep the trunk down, I guess. Sorry, it's having a hard time focusing. What's weird is uh, there's no Ferrari badge on the back either. So, hmm. This is a bit of a weird one. If I didn't compare it to the other ones, I would have thought it was really awesome, but what really detracts from this model is the uh, the thinness of these tires. So from the front view, it just, it just doesn't look like a race car. So it's really strange. Hmm. Okay, well, we got that out of the way. So, let's take a look at this Kyosho one. Now this is the, the, the Spider, so it'd be a 365 GTS. And uh, here's some colorway choices, red, black, yellow. And uh, this was apparently a model kit, but this is from someone's personal collection. It, it just came assembled. It didn't even have the uh, blister pack or anything like that. It was just literally rubber banded to the stand because there's no screw on the stand. It just rests there. Although I think you could remove this. Yeah, you could screw it to the car if you want, but it didn't come with it, so. Okay, so anyways. Let's see what's different or similar. So this looks like the road car again with its wiper blades. Pretty well proportioned Ferrari logo. Ferrari printing on the back. A little contaminant or something there. A little indication of some paint rash maybe starting up as well. Again, I don't know when this year you know this model came out because it didn't have the original box okay so these wheels here I think they're back to the normal street wheels yeah they look identical to me although the tires look different see the red car the curvature of the sidewall is much more pronounced it looks more realistic for that time frame whereas these look a little flatter doesn't look as good to me hmm alright so back to this photo here Look how curved the sidewall of those tires are, right? They're they're rounder. Hmm. Okay, so it might seem like I'm really nitpicky, but if there are differences, you know, this one has better tires. So obviously go with the better one, right? Okay, so now we're back to plastic uh, turn signals up here. But now we have, you know, the pop-up headlights because of those uh, regulations from the US. Separate chrome bumpers and then we have a grill here but this time I think it's printed on hmm sorry I can't focus come on yeah I think that's a black piece of plastic with silver printed on it it's not a texture like the very first model okay screwed together base again this time the tires look a little more correct there are different though they're a little narrower than this red one hmm weird yeah, strange. Okay. Exhaust tips are kind of lame. You know, they're just black. But maybe this... No, no, the real car has chromed exhaust tips, so this is kind of lazy on Kyosha's part. Okay, not sure what this is. Maybe a backup light. 
separate chrome bumper pieces. The uh, tail lights are plastic. I almost feel like this is orange and that's red. Hmm, I don't know. Might just be a random light, right? So, I don't know. But the thick plastic looks pretty good. So there's the interior. So you can definitely see there's molded detail there. It's just not very colorful. Okay, so let's get into the TLD. So we're talking a whole different price range here. So this interior right off the bat, you know, is much superior because it's got the printing on the center and it's not all black, right? So you can actually see some of it. The steering wheel has a little yellow, although it should have, it'd be nice to have the prancing horse there. Uh, yeah, it's better. And on the back here, we got the Ferrari printing. I think they're both just the same, really. Right? I don't see any major difference in the quality of the Ferrari printing. Okay, so yeah, we got separate chrome bumpers on the back. And then uh, just a blank license plate, which I think is kind of silly. Mm, weird. Okay. So now we got the uh, hood here that opens. But you know, for me, I don't think that's a really good engine to look at. It looks pretty basic, right? A battery doesn't look like that. There's just a, no plumbing there. It's, it's, it's not worth it for me to look at this unsightly uh, panel gap in, just in exchange for such a lame engine. If that engine was nicer, yeah, that'd be great, but it's not that nice. So, oh well. Okay, so now, I think this is actually a plastic lens in this paint behind it. Okay, so the wheels here, they're okay. But again, these tires, they're not very curved, you know, they're kind of flat. Let's compare. And also, why are the wheels so small on the TLV? I don't know which is more correct. Should the bigger... I almost feel like the Kyosho's wheels are more realistic. Looking at the photo of that real car, right? The TLV wheels are super small. They look like they're 14 inch wheels or something. I don't actually know how big the wheels are on this car in real life, but... To me, it looks like the Kyosho is more accurate. Okay. The TLV does have the little silver dot for the key lock though on the door, so that's good. They both have a rectangle here for the Pin and Farina badge, but let's take a look. The Kyosho is printed. It almost is legible, Pin and Farina. TLV is just a blank silver box. So that's lazy. Okay. Let's look at the f emblems here. That's the TLV logo. The horse is a little bit big. Yeah, Kyosho horse is a little big too. So they're, they're very similar. Yeah, okay. So, hmm. Just comparing the top view. I like the I, I almost like the Kyosho more because it doesn't have the panel gap. It and definitely it has better wheels. The only thing going in favor of the the TLV is the fact that it has a colorful interior. Right. Not even sure if it's better detailed in this molding. It just has color, that's the difference. What's weird is the interiors are different. If you look at the steering wheel of the Kyosho on the black left side, it's a bigger steering wheel than the TLV. And then the center console is a little different. This brake is right here in the middle. This one's over to the to the driver a little bit more. So interesting. I didn't look up images of the interior of this car, but there there are significant differences, so it's interesting. Okay. Hmm. The TLV definitely has better taillights though, I think. 
this is definitely orange and that's red whereas this is these are both red okay and then the exhaust tips on the TLD are better just because there's silver paint but also beyond that silver paint there's actually dimensionality to the TLD exhaust tips uh, it's hard to focus here sorry okay so you can see there's some depth to the TLD exhaust tips Kiosos are just blanked off, kind of lame. Remind me of Aoshima's. Okay, so. Hmm. There's definitely good and bad to each model. The the big difference, again, is this model is really expensive. Look up the price of one of these on eBay. Look up the price of one of these on eBay. So, that's my ragging on TLV today. And also, that panel gap about this far away and I can see that panel gap so if you imagined looking at a car this far away in real life you might be on like say a three five-story tall building would you see the panel gap on a car five stories away from you I, I don't think you would those Kyoshos the hood panel gap they look okay they're not even almost there they're not even there but, uh, you know, the panel gap on the far right is pretty noticeable from this distance. So that, again, is me ragging on companies, not just TLV, but like Greenlight, Auto World. I mean, th those companies could be as good as Kyosho if they just got rid of the opening hoods. They could look nice. Alright. Okay, anyways. Yeah. You guys don't have to agree with me. This is just my experience collecting, of course. But I thought I'd just throw up a video on these Daytonas because they are fantastic cars. Um, so I'll just leave you with another quotation from Sonny Crockett of Miami Vice. You've got to know the rules before you can break them.